It's also just striking to me, I mean, to, to just to watch Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz in particular. I mean, you look at these two people. They have, you know, they have sterling resumes. They are both Supreme Court clerks, right? One of the sort of most sought after brass rings that you can grab uh, as sort of a, a young and promising uh, legal thinker. They're relatively young as senators. There's a once in a century challenge. There are morgues that are filling up in Texas. They're, 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 they're going to hit hospital capacity. There's record cases in Missouri. These guys are out there talking about the Goya boycott and the NBA in China and Lawrence Tribe's tone. I mean, it's like, it's go be a blogger, go start a podcast, get out of the U.S. Senate if that's what you want to talk about. There is serious things to be done. I think there's no premise more offensive than that these Republican senators are somehow hostages to the Trump regime and to Donald Trump. They're vested with significant constitutional power, significant institutional right. power. And in the case of Hawley and Cruz, not only are they demagogues and silly people, they're just empty vessels. Again, they're the type of soulless men and women we see in this terrible age that care nothing for the ideas and ideals of the country. What they care about is their privilege, their power, their position. They would be comfortable as apparatchiks in any authoritarian regime from time immemorial to forward. They're not in it to defend any high principle. They're not in it to advance any great cause. They're not in it to make the country better. They're small and silly men at a serious hour, and that's the crisis we have in the country. It's a crisis of unseriousness. It's a crisis of cowardice. We're a long way from the Dean Atchison's and the Rusks and the Margaret Chase Smith's, men and women of conviction and character. Think of the guts and the courage of a Rosa Parks compared to these people who are actually vested with political leadership and responsibility in this country. It's just an appalling, appalling moment. And hopefully, as the tide rises up, because we have about 33% of the country that approves of the president's conduct, you know, roughly 65, 70% of us are get him out of there because the country has no chance of recovering from any of this until he's removed from power. But the overwhelming yep. majority yep. of Americans, their rage and their anger is rising like a righteous tide. It's going to sweep all of these people out of office. And when we're sitting in November, the Republican Party is going to be more resembling a smoldering ash heap than a political party. And everyone will sit around scratching their heads. And how did this happen? It happened became, because it became a principless, authoritarian-ish party headed by a con man from New York City who has debased, desecrated, and defaced our institutions now for years. And the American people are going to fire him because of it. So hope we make it to November. Hope Steve Schmidt, it uh, it's always great to talk to you. Thank you so much uh, for your time tonight.